In a gaming world where AAA titles and multiplayer games reign supreme, there are games that slide under the radar, such as this game, Axiom Verge. Axiom Verge is an indie game made over a span of five years from 2010 and releasing in 2015 by one man, Thomas Happ, and that makes it unique right off the bat. What also makes it unique is its story and its method of storytelling. So here's a basic synopsis of the story, so fair warning, there's going to be some spoilers ahead. The opening cutscene places you in a lab in New Mexico where it centres around the main protagonist, Trace, and his assistant, Dr. Hammond, who are attempting to perform an experiment in a non-specified field of science. The experiment goes horribly wrong, and the lab explodes, burying Trace underneath it. You wake up in unfamiliar surroundings and are guided by a voice who appears to be dying, who instructs you to grab a gun from the next room, which is essential to your progression going forward, and this gun is called the Axiom Disruptor. After making some progress, you meet the voice that has been meekly guiding you, a giant robotic head called Elsinova, who is too weak still to really tell you what's going on or where you are. You spend the next part of the game trying to save these robots, who are called Rasalki, by turning on the power filter, all while passing some horrors along the way. When you turn on the power filter, Elsinova explains a little bit about where you are and how things came to be on the planet you're on, Sudra, and the role it plays. She introduces the concept of the breach, which she describes as a storm, the breach attractor, which pulls the breach down towards the planet, and the main antagonist of the game, Athatos, and the pathogen he used to kill the people of Sudra which he passed along the way. Elsinova also mentions another Rasalka called Ophelia, who Elsinova describes as having found Trace in the breach. When Trace asks what that means, Elsinova says she does not know, but Ophelia knows but that Ophelia is also in need of repairs, leaving Trace to the job of enabling the repair drones to help the Rasalki, including Ophelia, repair their bodies. Along the way, Trace begins to feel a little woozy, feeling the effects of the pathogen, and he begins to hallucinate. Even the save eggs, or the rebirth chambers as you later learn them to be, which can save you from all other damage in the game, cannot save you from this pathogen. Trace reaches a boss room, which isn't anything new, having fought a few bosses, or as we learn, variants and clones of Athatos, but he finds himself in reverse roles where he believes he is the boss and that the intruder, Trace, is here to kill him. After being defeated by himself, the real Trace passes out, unable to carry on any further with the effects of the pathogen. While out of consciousness, Trace remembers the events that happened after the lab explosion, and as it turns out, the lab explosion had nothing to do with Trace ending up on Sudra as he is now. He remembers the scientific epiphany he came to while blind and crippled, which were the injuries he suffered from the lab explosion. His theories resulted in him being blacklisted and given a name, Athatos, which is quite a development considering that's the antagonist you're trying to stop. Trace wakes up in the next room and meets Ophelia, where they talk about the breach, pattern mines, and how Trace is the only person who could stop Athatos. It eventually becomes too much for Trace to take, and after killing an abortive clone of Athatos, he confronts Elsinova and Ophelia with the knowledge that he knows that he is Athatos. They explain to him that Trace is a clone of the original Athatos from what could be hundreds of years ago. Most likely when he first visited Sudra and used a rebirth chamber to heal his injuries, because he was previously blind and crippled, and in the process left behind an imprint. Ophelia explains that their hope was that a kinder Athatos would help the Rasalki and their plight. When Trace decides that he wants to talk to Athatos, Elsinova disagrees with this, is angered by it, and kills Trace on the spot. Ophelia brings Trace back and says that Trace can talk to Athatos if he so wants, and he doesn't need to fight him if he so wishes, but the breach attractor still has to be shut down. Before heading up to Athatos in the breach attractor, Trace meets Elsinova in her full form, her body repaired by the repair drones. She apologises to Trace for killing him, and also agrees not to kill Athatos once the breach attractor is shut down. You continue your journey upwards, eventually make it to Athatos, speak to him, and Athatos explains why he released the pathogen onto the world, talking about the reverence the Sudrans saw their ancient technology and the technology beyond Sudra that he wanted to bring back to Earth, which could end things like famine, war, and just generally advance Earth's technology. But because the Sudrans stood in the way, and they saw their technology as something to be feared and worshipped as such, uh, Athatos decided to murder them all by releasing the pathogen, 
uh, but describes the Rasalki as the flaw in his plan, having destroyed a portable device that protected him from the pathogen, which means that Aftos is holed up at the breach tractor in a machine that merely pro prolongs his death. When the fight is over and the breach tractor is shut down, Elsinopa kills Athletos, having, gone back, having originally promised that she would not, and sends Trace back to his own world. Once there, Trace, this time awakens from his a lab explosion with no injuries, but finds it impossible to return to his previous life, and is de desperate to get back to Sudra. In the 100% ending, Athletos arrives just as Trace is about to make a breakthrough, and shoots Trace, telling him it's time to wake up. What that actually means is hard to say, but my theory is that everything that happened after Trace reawakens with no injuries is either a dream and that he is still in a coma and then when Athletos comes and tells him to wake up and shoots him, he wakes up, maybe for real, or that perhaps when he did reawaken with no injuries, perhaps the Rosalki saw where he was going, the path he was heading down, and that the dreamer, Veruska, who is another Rosalka that you meet along the way, who makes mind worlds, could also be construed as alternate realities, somehow sends Athetos to stop Trace, who had already shown a yellow flash in his eyes, showing parallels to Athetos, whose eyes are yellow. That's up for debate, but there's a basic synopsis of the story. While there's a lot to be interpreted in the playable events of Axiom Verge, there's a ton to be interpreted in the backstory, the culmination of events leading up to Athetos unle unleashing the pathogen. And this is fed to you in the form of notes scattered all across Sudra. Some people like to be spoon-fed the story and told exactly what everything means, but one of the things I love about Axiom Verge is that it's up to you to infer a lot of what happens and theorise various implications of notes and conversations. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to read the notes, talk about a few things, theories, etc. and general implications of the pre-story before Trace wakes up for the first time on Sudra. So here we are, we're on top of Kerr, uh, one of my favourite songs in the game, playing in the background, one of my favourite areas. This and Eden, we'll probably go visit as well. When reading notes, I like to go to a place where it's got good music in the background, so with that, kind of these won't be in order, but kind of we can just tackle them one by one, so it calls itself Zeder. I don't know how I know this, but I do. Strange that such a thing would have a language, stranger still that it would have a personal identity. I'm not sure how long I can last. I lose more and more each passing day. Sound is a deafening throb. Sight is a kaleidoscopic fire. Smell and taste open up entire worlds of terror. The worst is touch, a tingling, writhing, itching mass. It is expanding, supplanting. There won't be anything to save when it's done. So it talks about Zeder, which is the first boss you fight in the game, the first variant. I believe this is Trace, or I'm going to say Trace or Athletos, kind of same kind of thing. So I think this is Athletos speaking. Not sure how he knows how this thing is called Zeta, but he does know it. And he had strange, he finds it strange that it would have its own language and personal identity. Whether that is the Sudran language, that's probably most likely. And then he just describes horrible things to a person as dying possibly an effect of the pathogen not 100% sure but that would be a, a theory of mine the outsider this is actually one of the most important notes in the game you simply must stop tempting me with such delectable musings it is with great restraint that I say respect your original decision she may be playing puppet master but for now we need her but once we've got what we came for let her be mine please so this is written in the Viccan language uh, or the so the other word for Rasalki is Kililtu this is this, that's a Sujin word for the Rasalki the Rasalki is Elsanova's word for the Kililtu and we can kind of get to that so the outsider might initially be referring to Athotos but because it's implied that it's a female it doesn't. It would appear it couldn't be Athetos, because obviously Athetos is male. The only thing that makes sense in this situation is that it is Elsinova, because it seems as though she is not from 
A, not from Sudra, but B, not from where some of the other Rasalki are, as such. So, you talk, I think Trace, when he sees, he's in the room with the giant uh, Rasalki bodies in the background. When he says to himself, Rasalki, Ophelia says, that's the word in Elsinova's language. So obviously, you think about it even very simply, there are many languages here on Earth. Uh, there are different words for different things in different languages. And Rasalki would appear to be a different word for the Kililtu. So, which implies that Elsinova is not from here as such. So, in terms of who's actually speaking, I would probably guess it's Veruska. Because Veruska kind of speaks very extravagantly in her dialogue. And uh, even from her, the very short dialogue that Trace has with her, that's pretty apparent. So, it seems as though that's what's going on here. Is that this is the Rasalki's opinion of Elsa Nova, and that she is an outsider. But acceptance of the fact that they need her. But as soon as it's done, you know. Security notice the intruder who commandeered the storm talisman, which I think is another word for the breach, or the breach attractor is suspected of releasing a plague, so this is you're referring to the pathogen. The intruder obviously being Athatos. Attempts to negotiate with the intruder have failed, as have the use of force. Evacuation has been thwarted by the storm itself, so by the breach. Until we understand this affliction, we are requesting that people remain in their homes and keep away from public areas. Signed, Nin Aruna. So we'll be seeing more from Nin Aruna very soon, but my guess is I'm guessing it's a her. I'm guessing that she is some sort of has some sort of either political role or clergy cler clerical ro role, I should say, uh, which appears to be important in the planet. Either way, she's important. It seems. This is one of my favorite ones. My lovely. <laughs> I have a new dream for you. I think you'll like this one. It starts with your death and goes on from there. Return to my embrace. I've missed killing you. It's such a great, oh, a great note. Again, I think that is very clearly Veruska. Uh, just again, the way it's phrased. And obviously, she uh, kind of s specifies in mind, machine, dream kind of thing. Reality, as it seems. So, who she's talking to, though, again, is Elsa Nova. That would be my guess. Of course, our other killer to at play here as well, but my guess it would be Elsa Nova. Because it does seem, the more we read the notes, there seems to be more of a kind of conflict between the uh, the killer two. The Breach. Our best conjuncture thus far is that it is a forced relink of a latest's underlying adjacent universes. The Breach Tractor, then, has some capacity to shift the points of which the latest's link. The region beyond the Breach remains intact. As when the breach recedes, the atmosphere and surrounding ocean don't encounter a vacuum in its absence, though there is a strong disturbance in the currents once the two sides meet again. Outside of a breach elevator, passing through the breach can be fatal. The Sudrans use this as a makeshift shield to keep out intruders, or, as in our case, to keep something else trapped in. Based on their writings, it seems that the Sudrans have long lost a scientific understanding of what the breach truly is, perceiving it as an intense meteorological phenomena rather than a divider between worlds. A7 hypothesized that the breach itself is invisible, and that the effect we see in the sky is in fact a protective field of microscopic elements covering the frayed ends. So this is, I think, very clearly Athatos speaking. Uh, D talks about the breach attractor, and the breach itself. He mentions the breach elevator, and that Sujit uses a makeshift shield to keep intruders out, or in our case, keep something else trapped in. So he's obviously referring to keeping the Rasalki trapped, because obviously, when you, they, no, the Rasalki can't operate in the breach, which is obviously why Trace or Athatos in act enabled the breach tractor pull the tray, pull the breach down, and they cannot leave the planet as a result, because they were the, the breach being so close to the atmosphere, going up into space, they won't be able to survive. 
So based on the writing, it seems like the Sutras have long lost their scientific understanding of what the breach truly is. So Trey, uh, Athletos mentions that when he got to Sudra, he basically, I'm paraphrasing slightly, but basically mentioned that the Sutras had no idea what they are and who they were as such and what technology they had. They didn't understand who they truly were as a people anymore. So in in kind of forgetting their purpose as well as their history, they also, through the generations past, don't know what the breach is anymore and think it's more of a weather thing than dividing between the worlds. So obviously, as Elsa Nova mentioned, Sutras kind of a plan to keep things in check beyond the breach. But they, the Sutras saw it as a weather thing. And at A7, which is one of, one of the variants, theorize that the uh, breach itself is invisible rather than something you can actually see. Which obviously, duh, I mean, that's... <laughs> I mean, if it's not, if it's invisible, you can't see it. But in terms of like a weather kind of thing, you see rain, storm, etc. But there's in fact a protective field of microscopic elements covering the frayed end. So if we even if we go for a jump, I believe you can actually see part of it. You can see in the background some of what he's referring to. You can see the blue bits as I fail to drone jump. But you you see why I mean the uh, you see some of the bits in the background there. So in general, it's it's the first few pages I can't don't really understand. That's kind of fine, um, but yeah, the breach. Axiom one, probably one of the most important notes of the game. All algorithms are universal and valid, regardless of whether they are executed. Cognition is a sub-algorithm whose behavior is to perceive properties of the parent algorithm describing it. I think this is the most important part here, right here. Any algorithm giving rise to cognitive entities will be perceived as a reality by the entities described. And when you find this note, it's actually the only note that triggers a little cutscene when you find it, but when you find it, Trace mentions that, when he, when he thinks to himself, this is before he tells or confronts Elsinova and Ophelia that he knows he's Athatos, so at this point he's still kind of still playing dumb, but he mentions that this is from his paper and it's one that basically helped him give him his name, which is Athatos. So, in terms of the actual axiom, uh, I'm not well versed in theoretical physics or physics in general, but the last part is really interesting. Any algorithm giving rise to cognitive entities will be perceived as reality by the entities described. So, uh, <laughs> the word Cognitive or cognition is something I've heard all too often. I've played at Persona 5, and obviously the idea of cognition, they're kind of in someone's head, is mentioned a lot. So any algorithm giving right to cognitive entities, so matter made from the mind possibly, will be perceived as reality by the entities described. So what that actually means, I don't know. <laughs> But I know that the axiom, in terms of the title axiom verge, is kind of it's described as the edge of such, the edge between worlds. And I think this is basically what part of this axiom is describing. To better understand the Rasalki we made this command, reveal of Vika, so obviously this is just the uh, the Vikan, which is just the Rasalki language. So that's just traces very into that. Athatos. Katrahaska got to him before I had a chance. He is here, and he released some kind of plague. I tried to stop him, but failed. He thinks I am dead. He's holed up at the breach attractor now. We can't let him escape. So Katrahaska is another Rasalka who you pass along the way, who is a traitor. She helped Athatos spread the pathogen, uh, but the Rasalki then killed her. Which we'll get to soon. So, who is writing this? It could be Elsinova, it could be Ophelia. I don't think it's Feruska. But my guessing is that it could be Ophelia writing this. He thinks I am dead, but whoever's writing this is not. He's holed up at the breach attractor now. 
obviously by way of the Rasalki destroying his portable device that protected him from the pathogen, we can't let him escape. It's fairly straightforward. Student translation. This is actually more interesting than the Vikan translation. I've done my best to enable a rudimentary translation between Sudran and English. That is, the modern Sudran script, not the programming language. The command is reveal Sudran. I try to with success on most of the modern Sudran communications as well as some of the older Sudran texts. Much thanks to the Gertab variant for his assistance. Now Gertab is one of the variants or bosses you fight, he is the kind of the scorpion thing, who had a lot of things to say before actually fighting Trace. Actually probably more have said more than anyone else. Uh, kind of uh, thinking to him or kind of saying out loud that it looks like Athatos carries weapons seeing it as kind of half of kind of seeing seeing part of it as Athatos, obviously because of being Trace being Athatos, uh, but also is seeing his weapons something to threaten it with. So he says he's unsure and then to make sure it must die. And obviously that's where the boss fight begins. So uh, obviously in game it's just used to translate the Sudran language. From the High Priestess we have retrieved what remains of your belongings from this silo. The old machines are yours. The clergy await your instructions. You have free reign to either redeem or condemn yourselves. Choose well. Shinima. So the High Priestess I think is probably the person in the highest position of power it seems at Sudra would be my guess. Uh, there's a letter here, we've a note here we've kind of yet to see about the Rosalki wanting to use the Sudran technology, the old machines. And so this is this note is basically sent at a point where they're doomed pretty much from they're pretty much doomed at this stage. The pathogen has been released, people are dying, and as a last resort the the clergy have given power over to the Rosalki in the effort to try as a last ditch attempt to try and save uh, what's left here. Choose well. Machinima. We know that the mind, like Usulid's, I think I'm saying that right, algorithm is eternal, existing equally across all universes in which it appears. It can never perceive its own demise, rather the instances which do not cease. Carry on for those that do. For most of us, this happens without us being any the wiser. But what of Uruku? This is not so much a death as a deadly, aberrant dementia. The algor algorithm itself is twisted, changing from one moment to the next. There is not any one point at which Athatos ends and Uruku begins, simply a continuum of torment. Were I to die now, would I awaken mercifully as my former self, or as this amalgamation, forever seeing danger in every shadow? So I think it's fairly obvious that's Athatos speaking. Uh, he is a he mentions a concept which I'm super interested by. It can never perceive its own demise, rather the instances which do not cease carry on for those that do. So, uh, having watched a few things, having watched, I was a subscriber of the Jeff and David show, they played this game, so how it kind of came to know in the first place, and Jeff mentioned a theory, or a kind of a, an idea of agents within the system cannot comprehend what's outside the system because they are by their nature of the system. And that's kind of, you can think about it, and it's kind of, it just makes sense. You can't perceive something that's out. People outside the system can't understand what's in the system because they're not in the system, if that makes sense. So I think that's kind of what he's partly saying there. But the, the rest of those notes kind of goes on. It's basically a little bit of fear from Athatos. Uruku, who he mentions, is one of the variants. It is a giant boss. Uh, Dash is hideous in every single way. Uh, so you can imagine the obviously as he talks about an aberrant dementia. So he's kind of wondering himself if he were to die, would he reawaken himself in a rebirth chamber as Trace does every time he dies, or would he awaken as Uruku, the boss, for every single danger in every shadow? So when, uh, when Trace arrives into a boss room, they see danger in every shadow. Demon. Athatos say kill. So, 
does this mean Uruku was the last variant maybe he made? Doesn't seem likely because he made, there's another page where he mentions a new variant on Suja and he's working for the Rasalki. So this is one of the more recent, this is kind of the, one of the last few notes that he wrote, probably the last note he wrote, uh, left up in Mar Uru. He's working for the Rasalki, he's young. More importantly, he has the Axiom Disruptor. If you can still read this, kill him. He can, do, he can undo everything we've worked for. I still haven't determined where he came from. If there is some alternate passage into the breach, we absolutely must find it. I'm going to make at least two new variants to deal with this. So it wouldn't be unlikely that Uruku was the last one he made, but it's interesting why he mentioned Uruku rather than any other uh, variant or clone as being one that he fears he might awaken as if he were to if he were if he were to die. So it's an interesting thought. Uh, with this with this note, I think it's safe to say the last note that Athatos wrote. Obviously, pretty, pretty much from the beginning of the game, basically, where Trace awakens on Sundra. And he's working for the Rasalki. He's young, obviously a much younger version of himself. He has the Axiom Disruptor. So he mentions if there's some more alternate passage into the breach, we absolutely must find it. So he doesn't know where he came from, but obviously we know where he comes from. Amphelia found the imprint of the nano gates, which are the little red things that swirl above you when you die, uh, which they use to kind of pull, kind of make a cl make a clone as such from the imprint left behind from Athatos when he first used a rebirth chamber when he healed himself. We absolutely must find out. I'm going to make at least two new variants to deal with this. So I'd imagine the t those two new variants refer to the Sentinel which is the uh, one of the bosses you fight in Mar Uru, and the second one being Zedar Hull, I think it is, I think off the top of my head. Um, basically the super powerful version of the first boss you fight in the game, So, uh, which is very mean. Public notice, it is, so to the people of Sundra, it has come to pass that both High Priestess, the High Priestess and Ninaruna have died of the plague, as have many more of the priesthood and nobility. Sudra as a kingdom is no more. Look for us in prisons below Council Rock, where the Kalutu are awakening the old machines. May the gods guide us until distant days. So this is basically them declaring the end, that it's over. Sudra is a kingdom no more, it's gone. There is, we've lost. Which is pretty, f the finality of that is pretty strong, uh, but that is the reality. So the Shinema and Inaruna both died, as of many more. The prisons below Council Rock are obviously the uh, giant corpse of bodies where everyone gathered and obviously waited out until their death. Nothing they could have done to save themselves. The pathogen was too much to overcome. But it mentions where the Kalinta are awakening the old machines. I've seen many kind of people theorize that the old machines are the rebirth chambers, but what, to what extent could the, in that moment when there's still hope, I wouldn't say hope, but there's still kind of, there's, there's still a battle to be won and lost against Athatos and this pathogen, I'm not understanding what good the rebirth chambers would do. So I think the old machines are just a reference to Sudra's ancient lost technology would be my uh, would be my guess because on their own on the surface of it the rebirth chambers wouldn't do the Rasalki much good in if they wanted to defeat Athatos because obviously the I think it's fair to say the rebirth chambers couldn't save someone from the pathogen effects I think Trace made that fairly apparent when he was having his hallucinations and such you save yourself in a safe egg and there is nothing like you're still feeling the effects. You're, you know the pathogen is not cured. It's only when Ophelia cleans out your nano, as you call it, nano flux, uh, that you're healed. So we'll get more on the old machines in a bit. I'm actually going to change location, so I'll be uh, I'll be right back. So we relocated to Ikerma, which is one of the more interesting areas of the game. A more very cathedral-like, uh, very different, I think, to everything else aesthetically in this game, which is interesting because I, really, I do like the colour palette of this game. Uh, less so in the beginning areas, but a lot more so in the later ones like Kerr, Eden, and obviously here. 
So, next note, faded note. To whoever, whomever finds this, Sutra is miraculous. The fact that I have been healed attests to that, but it is too dangerous to bring this technology back to Earth. Whatever happened here was catastrophic, the ramifications extending to everyone. We are going upstream, to the filter, or whatever lies beyond for answers. Trace. So it's pretty clear that this is probably from the first time Trace visits Sudra. And it was appeared to be a very long time ago because this is the only faded note in the game. So perhaps kind of everything else everything else kind of seems like electronic, right? These notes from Athetos seem pretty electronic. These are tablets which are native to uh, obviously Sudra, whereas this looks like a piece of paper. Kind of or maybe what Trace had with him when he came. So and this obviously over time paper fades, but there's enough to obviously to make out. So my guess is that he hadn't he hadn't really explored any of the technology, he had just come, found a rebirth chamber, and obviously was healed. He could not have done this on his own, because uh, he obviously was blind and crippled, so you needed Dr. Ha I assume Dr. Hammond went with him, because so he was obviously helping him put together his uh, theory of everything. It was just there for him, so I imagine that's what happens uh, when he says we are going upstream. So I think, is that upstream? That, is that through the breach to the filter? What does that mean? Because obviously, he, at this point, he decides it's too dangerous to bring the technology back to Earth. But obviously, when you speak to Athatos, hundreds of years obviously have passed since. When you speak to him at the breach elevator, he, well, he, it's he made a genocide happen so he could get this technology back to Earth, and obviously, technology from beyond this world of Sudra. So, what happened in between? Did he spend time in the breach? was upstream in the breach to the filter did he start to go slowly insane there obviously a lot of time passed it's hard to say but you kind of get a feeling from the first you could even say it's tr it's athletos but in a sense it's trace in many ways because he's still you could you could you could kind of this trace that we're seeing right now could have written that you know he's he's young he's kind of still Innocent, I guess, is the way to put it. Conversation with A3. Who are you? I am Talal. What are you doing here? Udokal. What does Ugol Hall mean? Intelligible. Demon. What does it look like? Unintelligible. Is Talal an Udog Hall? No. What is Talal? Unintelligible. What happened to Athatos? I am Athatos. But you just said you are Talal. How can you be Athatos if you are Talal? I am Talal. Who do you think I am? Athatos, why did you attack me? No response. Do you remember attacking me? Talal, attack, demon. So this seems to be a conversation between the two variants. Uh, obviously, A3 being Talal. So it would appear. A9 being another variant. Uh, what variant is this Athatos himself? Is it the aborted clone? I would doubt so, because the aborted clone couldn't really speak any English. Most one roars. Uh, so, who was he just observing? Was Athatos just there and he was observing the conversation between the two variants in the room? Could that have been the possibility? I guess the most important page, I think, is. Uh, yeah, I think is this. Why did you attack me? And do you remember attacking me? So again, who the circumstances of that meeting are unclear. As is Athatos's role in it. Is he speaking? Either way, this would appear to be where kind of the variants go a bit rogue. Would be my thoughts. Plan B. I realize I failed in our primary objective, but please hear me out. I didn't just kill Katra Haska's body. I used the Gatebreaker. We have a fresh set of nanogates to do with as we please. Given what we learned recently about the Sutra and Rebirth Chambers, we could use this to our advantage. In fact, it may be better than my original plan. We would control him. So I think it's fairly clear that's Ophelia speaking. Uh, they mentioned they kill Katra Haska using something called the Gatebreaker. What that is, we don't know, we never hear anything else about it. 
but the point is they have a fresh set of nano gates to do whatever we, to do with whatever we please. So obviously what they end up deciding doing as we read basically here is that they obviously found uh, they found Athetos' imprint from hundreds of years ago, whatever the case may be, when he first arrived on Sudra. Like, and this kind of goes back into Ophelia's thing where she says a kinder, younger Athetos might be able to help them. And said we would control him. Obviously, control is a fickle thing, but I guess in the sense that Elsa Nova could kind of control Trace when she killed him. So there's that element of control. So they could do it, do it over and over again until he agreed to uh, to to help them, which could have ended up being the case. But Trace is, uh, thankfully, Ophelia was there to kind of uh, be reason as such in that situation. Because as Trace mentioned, the uh, process of being killed is excruciating, as obviously you'd imagine. So how many times would he be able to undergo this before he finally submits and said, "I have to. I, I fine, I'll do it." So that's plan B. The storm. Now this is this is a pre predecessing note from the Kill to before the Sudrans give over the lost the uh, the old machines to the Kill to when basically all is lost. A cinema. You barely understand the technology that surrounds you, yet claim to protect it. It will crush us all once it fails. It leads Gratis access to your rebirth chambers. Do that, and I'll consider being less bitter over what came before. So that could be Elsa Nova speaking, I would imagine. Again, I think, I think it's Elsa Nova because these, these particular notes are translated. So she may not speak great English, but I'm sure her Vican is more than okay. So I thought earlier that the old machines might not extend specifically to the rebirth chambers. So what the actual Rosalki want with the rebirth chambers? I don't know. Did they have this plan beforehand? This, tra this plan B? And then before they could really enact it properly uh, Athetos 1. That could be a theory. I'm not sure. But uh, the end part is very important here I think. Because uh, this is the implication for another we've yet to see. Do that, and I'll consider being less bitter over what came before. So, if we actually look, um, it's this one. Okay, I think it's this one. Um, we'll get to it. Actually, it's. Let's carry on. Athos has disabled our drones. This one is operating on battery power. My own blood is failing me. If you want to go forward with Ophelia's plan, plan B, now is the time. I say why not? We may die regardless, but this is a little bit more interesting. So is that Veruska speaking? It's definitely not Ophelia speaking, because obviously it mentions Ophelia in third person. Is it just another Rosalka in general? Hard to say, but Basically, the beginning of the end for the Kililtu seems to be when the repair drones were disabled. I'm not sure when the power filter was disabled, but it seemed to be the beginning of the end. You may die regardless, but this way is a bit more interesting. The quick brown fox jumped over the lazy sleeping dog. What, pray tell us a fox? English thought long ago succumb to evolution's merciless twisting lever seems to be with us once again. Queen Elizabeth I has bestowed upon us a new dream. Come into my arms, we have much to learn. So that was appeared to be Veruska speaking, I would say. Uh, so obviously the people of Sudra do not speak English, they speak Sudran. How did they learn to speak English? Was that an influ influence brought over by Athos originally? Hard to say. Did the Rasalki come over and start speaking English? So he seems to be with us once again. Queen Elizabeth I has bestowed upon us a new dream. So is that in, is I imagine the use of Queen Elizabeth refers to English as a language, as a nation, possibly. 
Is Queen Elizabeth maybe a, another Rasalka who specialises in mind worlds? I have theory, I don't think so, but bestowed upon us a new dream. Come to my arms, we have much to learn. Come to my arms, we have much to learn. Is that an interpreter is English? Much to learn? It's hard to say. I'm not 100% sure about this note. Official letter. So, to High Priestess Ashinima, while we are normally hesitant to recommend any course of action that the Kalutu may have suggested, we have little choice. We are unlikely to survive this regardless. Give them what they want. So this is obviously Ninaruna talking to High Priestess Ashinima. Uh, again, basically at the point where they're almost at the end, and this is a last resort. They, do they don't like the idea of acting on something that Kalutu have suggested. Uh, as it implies, it's probably a way of war, but they have little choice in the matter because they're probably going to die regardless. Just give them what they want. Again, which is a pretty tough ultimation to come to, but that's the reality of it. Now, this note is the one I want to. This is what I want to talk about. This is a very important one. From it's an anonymous quote. It must not be forgotten the legacy of Sudra. In those far remote days, it was a time of war, of battles between angry demons and angry men, when the roaring storms of fire and darkness were cast like stones between combatants. This is beautiful phrasing, man. It was not until the sky ocean was torn asunder, the last crop turned to dust, and the last brick of the last home shattered, and the last demon, and the last warrior lay dying, that the people understood their sin. And so the arms of the apocalypse were sealed, masters of patterns castrated and the old machines returned to slumber. The legacy of Sudra is atonement, it is reparation of the sea and the stars, it is the suffering that brings our salvation. It's actually not the one I'm, th not the one I'm thinking of, but in those far remote days, so does this refer to, so when Athatos got here, uh, he mentions that whatever happened here was disastrous. And the technology is too dangerous to bring back the ramifications extending to everyone. So, is that referring to then this war, which refers probably to nuclear war in a sense? I think that's a fair assessment. Uh, in those far remote days, so is that is that maybe how this this mass war between demons and whoever was taking place in this war was it the Kalilto was it the Sujin themselves, was it an outsider uh, from another world possibly because I think this precedes everything that happened beforehand uh, and is this how maybe everyone kind of forgot what Suja was, what it was supposed to be and what uh, how they forgot and feared their technology because they, as Athatos kind of mentions now obviously if, to chew the meat, spit out the Spit out the bones, chew the meat, basically, when it comes to Athatos and what he says. Uh, he can't really be trusted entirely. But he mentions that they forgot who they were, and they basically rev they feared their technology, their ancient technology. Is this the reason why? Is this the reason why they forgot that and feared in the one swoop this ancient war? So the apocalypse was sealed, the master patterns castrated, all machines returned to slumber. So again, Old Machines, is that exclusively Rebirth Chambers? Is it just a moniker to the Suja technology in general? I'm not sure. Legacy of Suja is atonement, is reparation to see the stars. So is that just the reparation of their atmosphere? Maybe. It is the suffering that brings our salvation. Land of Civilized Kings. Actually, I think this might be one of the most important uh, notes in the game. The land of, I say that for everyone though. The land of civilized kings, spoken of with reverence, in poem and song alike, is often described as our motherland, our birthright, our promised kingdom. It is this one's opinion that the land of civilized kings is other than Sudra itself in a time of former glory. The old machines, those perennial tokens of bad fortune, were our one time salvation. Eternal harvest, eternal happiness, eternal life. How did we learn to fear such things? Human nature. We are trained to expect bad to fall from good like night following day. We have an instinct not to drink too deeply of the sweetest nectars, and sometimes this instinct swings to the other excess. 
it is time to stop speaking of the land of civilized kings as a long lost dream. It was never lost, it is simply waiting for us to wake up. Pretty deep, very deep actually. Uh, so, so basically Sudran spoken of with reverence in song and poem alike, often described as our motherland, our birthright, a promised kingdom. So I'm guessing before the war or maybe technological apocalypse of some sort or whatever the case may be when Trace arrives and something disastrous has happened at some point in one way or another. Is this what they kind of is it just ref, no, referring to Sudra before all that? Or is it referring to Sudra before Athatos came and basically exterminated everyone? I'm inclined to think the, the, the former and not the latter, but again, it's up for debate. Uh, the old machines, those perennial. So, is this again? It's. I still think this is referring to Sudran technology as a whole, not just oh, not just the rebirth chambers. Perennial tokens of bad fortune are one-time salvation, eternal harvest, possibly of life, eternal happiness, possibly life, and then eternal life. It's hard, kind of three amalgamated, probably into, maybe into one. How did we learn to fear such things? Human nature. So, obviously, it's not Sudra nature, but human nature. So, did my my initial thought maybe is if it's that if it's the time of this is all being spoke of is maybe before Athatos comes. Did Athatos come and start kind of sowing the seed of the people fearing their technology? Did and maybe kind of teach them to fear in a sense you're know, trained to expect bad to follow from good like night following day so I think in general in life if too many good things happen human nature kind of teaches you to think something bad's going to happen soon because you know it is a sense of evening out it kind of that it's kind of that mindset and I think this is what happened to the people of Sudra was that they were trained or maybe manipulated misled to thinking that these machines could actually be a bad thing and this is how they kind of maybe began to see their technology with such fear is that possibly ma manipulation could be that I think Elsmova mentions Athatos as a master manipulator or something of the sort I'm paraphrasing slightly which he kind of talks about pattern minds uh, maybe it's that and then they kind of talk about kind of how they fear, like so. Obviously, we we expect bad to follow from good, like night following from day. An instinct not to drink too deeply of the sweetest nectars, and sometimes this instinct swings to the other excess. So merely, this is I think referring to the people. I think referring to the people realizing what they are, and that it was never lost. Is simply waiting for us to wake up. So they obviously had no generations past they had obviously have no idea who they were as such was it because of war was it because other manipulative uh, things coming and going it's kind of hard to say but I think it's this is referring to that it's it's kind of wake up to your destiny kind of thing it's there you just have to wake up to it I think it's kind of what the note is kind of referring to again these are just kind of my scattered thoughts and yeah, just you know, just putting stuff out there because uh, I've not kind of seen people kind of touch on some of the, the theories I have about this. It just kind of floats stuff out there, kind of again chew them, chew the meat, spit out the bones, kind of thing. Oraka. So Oraka is another Rasalka whose head is running around in Indy, which is the kind of the p passageway between all the major areas of uh, the Vaxian Bridge. My dearest Oraka has become ill. No matter what I dream for her, she remains listless. Please, she is harmless. Move her to a larger chamber. Give her room to stretch. Or, if you really wish for her to die, let me kill her properly. So I think this is Veruska then, uh, again, speaking. Again, no matter what I dream for her, she's, I think she's trying to say she whatever... There's no scenario, given her body or lack of body or whatever the case may be, her illness, whatever. There's no alternate reality that she can pick or she can pick out or find that will mean she won't be listless 
as or as uh, Veruska describes. So there's kind of nothing major she can do for her. But she's pleading that she just be moved to a place where she can just run around, basically. Let's see what that note, I think, is kind of saying. But again, I think it's very clear that it's Veruska who's, who's speaking. Uh, bear with me, I'm going to move to one more location. So, to finish this off, so we'll, we'll do that. Alright, here we are in Eden, we can finish off these these notes. It's probably my favourite song in the game, to be fair. So the Khalil 2, this is actually one of the most important notes, I think, as well. Extremely important, actually. A dozen generations ago, the Khalil 2 battled in the sea above, and the High Priestess wrung in the storm, leaving them to spill upon the plains. At the time, this was thought to be a good omen, and the Khalil 2, I mean the old machines, sent into the care of the priesthood. But the Khalil 2 do not age or die, so there they remain to this day, watching and waiting. The High Priestess may not remember what they once were, but the histories do, as do the Khalil 2. Should they ever be returned to the sea, I expect they will not look favourably upon us. That's from Nin Turi. So, I am un unsure whether the High Priestess... I'm guessing it's a different High Priestess. Uh, I thought initially that it was the same High Priestess as Shinema, but I just given that... I don't, I don't know what the average life age is on Sudra, or what it could be, so... Uh, if it's anything to Earth, then obviously there'd be a different, a different high priestess. So maybe when the and the next high priestess was appointed, and so on through generations, a uh, dozen generations at that. So you're looking at thousands or so years. If you think about, if you say generations, what? No, maybe not. So maybe not a hundred. Maybe a, a hundred or so years. Maybe two hundred, depending on how you define a generation, but. Uh, and then, as they went down through the processional line, they've kind of the high priests kind of forgot what the exactly they were. But so they battled in the sea above. I'm inclined to believe it'd be like that refers to the in space, the sky ocean, such the sky sea. And the high priestess rung in the storm. So she guessing then this. I think it's fairly clear that. She activated the breach attractor. Leaving this obviously, breach attractor pulls down the breach. Khalil 2 cannot survive in the breach, so either those that those that couldn't come down died and up there in the breach, or I'm sorry, then then obviously leaving the rest and then the spill onto the plains. So at the time this thought to be a good omen and the Khalil 2 resembling the old machines. So this is why I kind of thought why the old machines aren't exclusively the rebirth chambers and just a moniker to the old technology, the uh, lost technology as such. Because in no shape or form, I think, the, do the Khalil 2 resemble rebirth chambers. Obviously, they're heads and machines. I just think it's a, it's a general reference to the technology and sent it to the care of the priesthood. But I think what they failed to estimate was that they do not age or die. And so they remain here, trapped on Suja to this day obviously with the breach attractor being enabled. The High Priestess may not remember what they once were, but the histories do, as did the Khalil too. So, Elslova kind of calls them water machines. It kind of refers to them, she refers to the Rasalki as water machines. I'd be more inclined to say that they're referred to as war machines. And should they remember what they were, you know, Obviously, it's a, it's a big problem because now they've imprisoned these machines for generations on this planet. The histories remember, as do the Khalil too. Should they ever be returned to the sea or the space above, I do not expect they will look favorably upon us. And I think this is what uh, I believe the Elsa Nova mentions when she mentions do that, uh, considered being less bitter over what came before. So. I think that I think that note also leads into that note then, that the Kilu two were trapped by the High Priestess with the Breach Attractor, and if they grant access to the old machines, then 
they will be less bitter over what came beforehand, being trapped against their will, I'm assuming, for hundreds of years. The outside we've kind of looked at in a vacuum, but again, I think this is again referring to Elsa Nova. I'm so tired of her schemes, if not for her we wouldn't be in this predicament, and now this ridiculous plan. Aside from Drusca's obvious interest in her, we have no indication she's even telling the truth. We don't know where she is from, or even what strain she is. She seems to have greater capabilities than she admits. Should I have let you kill her when I had the chance? I do not know what is right anymore. So I'm not sure who is speaking. Uh, I don't know if it's Ophelia. I don't think I mentioned. I don't think it's a reference to Ophelia either. I do think it's a reference to Elsa Nova because it talks about the outsider. Um, kind of we talked about how I kind of think that Elsa Nova is kind of a different culture, maybe different kind of country or whatever the equivalent is for the Rosalki. Uh, that she doesn't really speak their language as such. They're at least Ophelia and Veruska's language, at the very least. So, I think it's kind of indicating that I don't know where she is from, or even what strain she is. I mean, they, they say strain, I think, kind of thinking mechanical kind of strain in a sense. I don't know what kind of. So, obviously, Veruska is a dreamer. Uh, we actually don't know what Ophelia is. But it's fairly clear when you see Elsa Nova that she is a soldier. Uh, and I think this is reflect like she seems to have greater greater capabilities than she admits, so pro probably not kind of revealing her full hand or full capabilities as such. So I think that's what they mean when they when they talk about that. Should I let you kill her when I had the chance? I do not know. So maybe this is written to Veruska possibly? Because Veruska, Veruska seems to be kind of, although she's a Rasalka kind of mentioned briefly, she seems to have a lot more influence and a lot more kind of power than I think is alluded to in her ability to make mind machines. Obviously, when you go back to, uh, <laughs> starts with your... <laughs> Yeah, I miss killing you. So I, I, I think she has ability to make horrible things happen to people. <laughs> now this note is a little bit cryptic. It's a proverb: "When in ancient days the black-headed retreated from the world, when after days of war the carrion birds circled, when graves were filled with caskets, when the lone orphan ploughed the barley." Now at the time. They were primordial patterns laid to rest, their masters banished. But just as the seeds of the next harvest were sown, so too did the king's plot and plan for the next battle. Did they scheme and make secret dealings? Far to the east, where the sea and the mountains meet, is a cave dug out by the crashing waves. Here the kings conspired and set aside the gracious of primordial fires. Dangerous bar. I don't know if I'm saying that right. <laughs> With its name as the key, it, lie, it lays in wait until that day when the next masters of pattern again reap the harvest. So the weapon in question is this, it's the flamethrower. It is by far the most powerful weapon uh, normally obtainable of the game, uh, excluding secret rooms, which we'll get to in a sec. Uh, the past this is found in... Erebu, sorry, no, it's found in Absu. Uh, no, sorry, Erebu, the first area of the game where you find it, you input the password which is of the same name, uh, which is uh, Dinjurj's Dinjurj bar. I don't know, I'm sorry, <laughs> it's a hard word to say. So that's where you find it. Now, see, Trace puts it to good use. We've looked at Trace already. We mentioned another note. And this is, the, this is the last one I actually picked up. Drushka's suspicions were correct. Rebirth logs show that a man named Athatos came here once before. Hundreds or possibly thousands of years ago. So you find this note right at the breach elevator, basically. Uh, pretty much at the breach elevator. Uh, which is interesting. I'm not sure who has written this note. It's probably the Rasalka, but they're speaking in Sudran, so 
which I think is, I think it's Sujin, or was it just plain English? Uh, either way, this basically sows the seed for Plan B about uh, giving what we learned about the recently learned about the Suja Rebirth Chamber, we could use this to our advantage. I think that's simply what it refers to. I actually skipped this one. I've hidden some of our more de sensitive items in the breach pockets appearing here and there. The Rasalki won't go in, interferes with their electronics. So this is refers to the secret worlds uh, where you can find some of the most powerful weapons of the game, uh, such as a fat beam, scissor beam is it how it's called? Uh, I've not found any of these in this playthrough, so <laughs> I only found nodes. So that is kind of all of the notes. Uh, the information of all this is kind of how do you kind of put together a chron it's hard to put together a chronological order of things and w and kind of narrow down to one kind of timeline because there's so much at play and there's so many different theories that it's string them all together you're not you're gonna have a thing that makes no sense so it's I think it's I think for that reason it's just easier to kind of break them down one by one but I think the most important notes are this one the Kalutu, which mentions obviously the uh, the war and kind of the uh, the high priestess using the breach attractor. Uh, Land of civilized kings, is this referencing a war beforehand or just the war afterwards, where you before Athatos, uh, basically talking about their lost history, and uh, that's an important one. A bunch of them obviously is just you kind of piece it all together. That's what I really love about this game. It's kind of reading all of these in the various locations you find them and kind of inferring various theories and implications of all of them and that's kind of what I really like about it I just I guess finally with this song I think it truly just kind of hammers home everything you've kind of seen up to this point. There's kind of a... There's a sense of a feeling you get from it that is kind of hard to put uh, put words to it. But it's kind of at this point of the game where I kind of realise, holy crap, some, like, what actually happened here? Now obviously, some people might not like... <laughs> obviously you pass the, the bodies uh, in the bottom of the uh, council, in the prisons. And you could obviously infer that conclusion as well, but I think just with this music, with this ancient lost city of Eden, the background, the mountains, whatever that skeletal remain is in the background, it's it kind of all comes together, I think, at this point. You kind of realise what actually happened here. And I think the full effect that what like a genocide was, you know, occurred by one person just so he could have his hands on the technology that he at one point said was too dangerous to bring back so what actually happened in the breach or outside of that that caused Athatos to kind of go insane like that and kind of decide that this was the right thing to do for humanity say to expend Sudra and yeah it's it kind of all for me came together I think in this area so that's kind of that's kind of ish, I guess. I, you know, I've theorised I think as much as best as I can. Again, chew out the meat, chew the meat, spit out the bones. Basically, is is a uh, is why I think when it comes to this, I've thrown out lots of different theories I, that I haven't really seen elsewhere. So if you're watching this, I hope you kind of either you know pull it together with your own theory that maybe something you thought of and kind of you know just kind of went from there, but. Uh, Anyways, thanks for watching, and until next time.